Hello. In this video, we are going to explore the decision structure and how to apply it in Python. We learned it through the book and the slide that there are actually two types of decision. The well, three types: the one alternative, the dual alternative, and the case structure. In the case of Python, we don't have case in Python, so we can actually don't don't see that one. But let's introduce and see the decision structure with the if statement. And how can we can actually do that? Well, let's ask for a number equal integer of input asking please give me a number between Let's say yes, between between one and ten, and then we can check if that number is valid. How can we verify that? Well, we can have with the if statement and how it works. If the expression, columns, and the code at the end. Remember, always indented. So we can check the expression is short, should it should be the, the Boolean expression, something that will return true or false. And we can say that if number is greater than 10, we can say print number invalid. Let's execute this. And let's give you number seven. We're okay. Let me just output a little bit better. Perfect. Let's say twelve number invalid. Let's say mm, three. Oh. Three. You don't say anything. We need to say that that number is valid. So with a single statement, or a single decision statement, we do something like this. Is number less than 11, or we can do actually less equal than. Oh, by the way, mm -hmm. um, let me just do something really quick. I have enabled my font ligature and have specific font to give me like extra character. So sorry for this. Here you go. If number is less or equal than, we can print number is valid. Then we put print as supposed to be, and we execute again. There you go. If we do 5, number is valid. If we do 11, number invalid. Perfect. But a way to actually do this without having to have two different decision points, we can do it in once. So I will just comment this out. I will copy this. And it will say, else columns this is actually the same as we had it before the difference is is just wrap it in one if else statement this is a dual decision 
if this is true, do this, or if not, do the other stuff. We can also compare the strings. Let's just comment that out a little bit, and let's say, mm -hmm. let's create a constant, teacher name equal Rodolfo. It's a really good practice to have constants as uppercase letters. This way it's going to be actually simple to understand it when you see it through the code. Let's say the name is equal input. What is your name? And we can say if, if name to equal signs is equal to teacher name, we can say print welcome, welcome professor, else Print. What comes to it? Oh, I forget the columns there. So we can execute. Okay, if my name is Rodolfo, welcome, professor. If my name is John, what comes to it? Why we are using two equal signs? This is really important because if we're using one, we're talking about assignation. We're assigning to the variable one specific value. But when we're using two, we are doing a validation. We are comparing and returning a true or false if this is actually. So we can do something like this comparison equal this and we can do this actually if I put Rodolfo the same if I put John welcome to it what we have in here this is returning true or false let's do a really quick print comparison in order you to see it, let's put something down. False. True. So this variable is actually storing the value of true or false depending on the comparison that we have in here. And then we say if it's true, do it. If not, do the other string. So here we have how to have the if statement single do all the statements, some string comparison, and do something about it. Okay, let's do one last example. I'm commenting it out in order not to have it there, but when I share this code, it's going to be uncommented. One last example will be And let's copy the first one, actually. Let's say between 10 and 20. So can we compare this? We need to verify if the number is greater than 10 and is lower than 20. Yeah. So we have its number is equal greater or equal to 10. We need to do something. If not, we know that print 
invalid. So we need to compare, after we compare that is greater than 10, we need to compare that it's lower than 20. So we can do a nested if figure. We can do something like if number is less or equal to 20, print valid, else Or we can leave it like that. No, oh, yes, we need it. Sorry. Print invalid. So what is happening here? We have an if statement inside of the block of another if statement. This means that we are going to do chaining two different comparisons. Let's try it. Let's say that we get number fifteen is valid. If we number 5, it's invalid. If we go number 90, it's invalid. So what is actually happening here? To do it with the nested if statement. Another way could be with another validation. We can simplify this code a little bit. Like doing something like if number greater equal then and lower equal and number lower equal to 20 we can do print valid else print invalid if we do 5 is invalid if we do it, 11 is valid, and if we do 200, is invalid. So what was happening here? This nested if statement is exact, doing exactly the same functionality as this simplified if statement with another logical operator. Here, we are checking the number one time. And if it's true, we do the next line. The next line is another comparison. So we are checking the number again. And because it's true, we are going to do this. If this is false, we are going to do that. But from the beginning, the number doesn't match this. It's going directly to this section. That's why we have two different invalid printing because we can have a number that is greater than 10 but is greater than 20 in that particular case we need to print valid and this only gets printed when the number is less than 10 simplifying this we can say if the number is 10 or greater than 10 and at the same time the number is lower than 20 so we're doing two comparisons in one line just to simplify the code Actually, another way to write this code will be if the number is less than 10 or the number is greater than 20, if it's all this is true, it's an invalid number. Or this is false, that means that it's between 10 and 20, the number is valid. So this is doing another type of comp comparison for giving us the same, same result as this. As you can say, it's pretty much the inverse. Greater than equal, less, and with or, less or equal with greater. So if we do this, we ha you should have three values when it's true or 3 when it's false. Let's check. So if I do 15, we should have 3 values in there. One value with the first block, another with the second, and 3 one with this one. Perfect. If we do 5, 3 invalid, if we do 21, 
should be trained by letter. That's it. These are the decision statements.